I'm going to try in the next few minutes to explain what I know about cloud formation, um, what causes raindrops, what causes lightning, and what causes thunder. So we got to start off to talk about uh, cloud formation. First we have to talk about the atmosphere. The atmosphere here on Earth is uh, composed of nitrogen and oxygen, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and the remaining 1% is everything else. But that's not all that's in the atmosphere. There's also water vapor in the atmosphere. Um, we know that there's water vapor in the atmosphere because when water evaporates into the air, it, it's in the atmosphere, but it's invisible. We can't see it. Okay, so we have an atmosphere that has water in it, but it's invisible water vapor, water vapor. Now, another thing that comes into play is a thing called dew point. And I know you've heard of dew point, but you probably really don't know what it is. What the dew point is, is the temperature at which the atmosphere can no longer hold all the water that's in it. So the water that's the water vapor that's in the atmosphere, when you get down to the dew point temperature, the water vapor that's in the atmosphere has to come out of its its vapor form and form little droplets. So, for example, if you um, listen to the weather on the television or if you pull up your uh, weather channel app on your phone, one of the things that it gives you, it gives you the temperature current temperature. It gives you the humidity, which is another way of talking about how much water vapor is in the atmosphere. And they give you the dew point. And let's say, for example, that the dew point on a particular day is, I don't know, let's say 63 degrees. And the temperature outside is 70 degrees. That means the temperature would have to drop 7 degrees in order for there to be water droplets. There's water vapor already, but in order for those, that vapor to turn into droplets that we can see, the temperature would have to drop 7 degrees. Okay, so that's dew point. Dew point's what, by the way, dew point's what causes, um, if you have a, a really hot, humid day, and it's 90 degrees, and the dew point is, I don't know, six, 70 degrees, let's just say, 70 degrees, and you're sitting in the house, and you got your glasses on, and you and your glasses are nice and cool, maybe even 70 degrees. When you step outside of the house into atmosphere where the dew point is 70 degrees, some of that atmosphere turns, some of the liquid, some of the water vapor in the atmosphere turns to liquid droplets on your glasses. That's what causes your glasses to fog up. As soon as your glasses warm up above the dew point, the vapor goes away. Okay. Another thing to discuss. So we've talked about water vapor in the atmosphere and we've talked about dew point. Um, dew point is the temperature at which the water vapor can't stay invisible water vapor anymore. It's got to become droplets. Um, lowering the temperature 
can cause the moisture to come out of the atmosphere. One of the ways to lower the temperature is to increase the elevation. So let's say you're on the ground and it's 70 degrees and you checked and the dew point is 63 degrees. As you go up in elevation, for every thousand feet you go up in elevation, the temperature drops three and a half degrees Fahrenheit. So the atmosphere contains moisture, water vapor, and we're going to have to lower the temperature by seven degrees in order for that vapor to become droplets so that we can see it. Well, all we have to do is go up 2,000 feet. If you go up 2,000 feet, the temperature at that altitude is seven degrees cooler than it is here on the ground. And so any water vapor that's in the atmosphere above 2,000 feet where it's colder than the dew point will be turned into water droplets. And water droplets like that, we c on the ground, we call them fog. Up in the atmosphere, up in the elevation, 2,000 feet above the ground, what would look like fog on the ground looks like clouds to us. Okay? So that's why, if you've ever noticed, if you go out and, and you look at clouds in the sky, many times on a, on a partly cloudy day, you'll notice that the bottoms of all the clouds, it looks like they're kind of sitting on a shelf or something. There's, they're white fluffy clouds, but they got a flat bottom. And this one over here is a white fluffy cloud, and it's got a flat bottom. And the bottoms are at the same height. Everywhere you look across the sky, all the clouds look like they're sitting on. Well, what they're sitting on is they're sitting on that point where the temperature is just at the dew point. Anything below that, it's too warm for there to be a cloud. It becomes water vapor again. It can't turn into a cloud until it gets cool enough, and it doesn't get cool enough until it gets high enough, high enough to be that cool, and at that point is where clouds can start forming. Okay, So that's why lots of times the bottoms of clouds are all at the same level. Okay, so we've talked about <coughs> cloud formation, what clouds are, how clouds form. And we talked about clouds being made of little tiny droplets of water. Okay. In order for those droplets to fall as rain, number one, they need something to cause this um, um, little microscopic droplets of water. You need something for them to, to form around, um, kind of like a seed. Many times it's dust particles in the atmosphere or some sort of little particles. And that little particle will get surrounded by a water droplet and then another water droplet will touch that water droplet and the next thing you know we've got a bigger water droplet and eventually enough water droplets join together and become bigger and bigger that they become so big that they can't stay suspended in the cloud and they drop out as raindrops. In really big clouds, there are air currents that form. So, so you have, you know, a little white fluffy cloud up in the sky and it has a little bit of rain falling out of it. No big deal. <clears throat> but if you have a really big cloud 
And this cloud goes from 2,000 feet above the atmosphere, above the surface, all the way up to 20,000 feet above the surface. Huge cloud. There are things going on in the cloud. There are, are wind currents inside the cloud. Updrafts. So what happens is these little water droplets, even some of them that are starting to, to get together to become bigger and bigger droplets, they get in these updrafts and they get carried way up in the atmosphere. And as they go up, they, they uh, hit other water droplets and they get bigger and bigger and they finally get up there and high enough that the wind current, and they get so heavy, the wind current can't keep pushing them up so they turn around and they start falling back down. And as they're falling back down, there's other water droplets headed back up. So we're, we have a constant water droplets coming down and water droplets going up. And these, these water droplets that are coming down, they're meeting more water droplets and they're getting bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. And when they finally get to the bottom of the cloud, they just keep on falling. They fall out as big raindrops. One of the things that you can tell when it starts raining, if it's great big raindrops that are hitting the ground, you know that's coming from a big cloud. That's not just coming from a little white fluffy cloud up there. It's coming from a big cloud. And there's all sorts of things going on inside that cloud to cause those big raindrops. All of these raindrops, the ones that are going up on the updraft currents, the ones that are falling back down because they've gotten so heavy they can't stay up anymore, they're passing one another, they're rubbing against one another, and it's just like if you walk across a carpet and shuffle your feet as you go, and when you get to the door, you touch the doorknob, what happens, especially in the wintertime, low humidity, you get a static discharge and it pops and electricity jumps from the end of your finger to the doorknob static electricity well these raindrops the ones going up and the ones coming down millions and millions and billions of them in a big uh, uh, cumulonimbus cloud uh, are just it just churning on the inside of that cloud raindrops going up and raindrops coming down and they're rubbing against one another and they're building up a static charge in the cloud the cloud itself is becoming statically charged and when the static charge in this cloud gets high enough and maybe there's another cloud right over here and it's got a static charge in it and these two clouds are charged up because of all these raindrops moving up and down you can have a static discharge just like when you reach over to touch the doorknob and electricity jumps from your fingertip to the doorknob electricity can jump from one cloud to the other cloud cloud to cloud lightning when enough static electricity builds up, electricity that can jump from the ground to the cloud. It's called uh, lightning. Most people think lightning comes from the cloud and hits the ground. Actually, it's the other way around. It's scientifically proven. Just take my word for it. It looks like it's going from the cloud to the ground, but it's actually going from the ground to the cloud. Enough said about that. That's what causes lightning. It's static electricity that's built up in a cloud due to the water droplets moving around in the cloud. That's what causes lightning. When lightning, when a lightning bolt occurs, whether it's from one cloud to another cloud or from uh, the earth to the cloud, whichever way it is that those lightning bolts are millions of volts of electricity and thousands and thousands and thousands of amps of current going through the atmosphere and the air 
right around that lightning bolt. By the way, a lightning bolt may not be as big as your little finger, but it is so bright and it is so hot that the, the atmosphere around that lightning bolt, lightning bolt might be a mile long from one cloud to another, the atmosphere around that becomes as hot as the sun. And that, that atmosphere, that, that air expands so rapidly because heated air expands, that, that, that air around that lightning bolt expands so rapidly it makes when that that expanding air shock wave gets to your ear you hear it as thunder that's what causes thunder it's it's the rapidly expanding air around a lightning bolt that you hear later as thunder by the way when you see a lightning bolt, start counting. It takes five seconds for the sound of thunder to get to your ears. It takes five seconds after the light from the lightning bolt gets to your eyes. So when you see the lightning bolt, go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, Five Mississippi. Boom! You hear the thunder. That lightning bolt is one mile away. Ten seconds, two miles away. So it takes five seconds for the sound energy from that lightning bolt to reach your ears. Okay? So we've covered what causes clouds. What causes clouds and fog is when the temperature gets below the dew point and the atmosphere is saturated and can no longer hold the moisture, the water vapor turns into water droplets, fog, or clouds. One of the ways that uh, we drop the temperature far enough to get to the dew point is to go higher in elevation. Every thousand feet we go up, we drop three and a half degrees Fahrenheit. When you go high enough to get cool enough for the water vapor to uh, come out of the atmosphere and form clouds, that's why clouds all look like they're sitting on a shelf many times. The water droplets inside the cloud going up and coming down create a static charge. When the static charge has reached a sufficient level, then there's a static discharge. That static discharge is called lightning. The lightning superheats the air around it. The, the rapidly expanding air causes a shock wave which comes to our ears and sounds like thunder. I hope that was a decent explanation. Let me know what you think. Okay? Bye.